Hello, welcome to actual play Court of Blades. <laughs> I'm Sean Nittner, uh, the host of the channel. Uh, I use he, him pronouns, and I am here often. Um, I'm very excited tonight to play Cor Bravo. She's been uh, kind of worked herself right into a duel with um, the, 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 the Prince's Justice, uh, who's apparently just a monster. So we'll find out. It should be it should be good to should be good to see. Um, yeah, uh, this is gonna be great. This is either our ultimate or our penultimate episode. We'll find out tonight um, whether we wrap everything up or whether we draw it out to another session. Um, and as always, uh, any contributions made to the channel are split between uh, Black Lives Matter and the Trans Legal Defense Fund. So uh, please click that. Amazon Prime subs and the cheers and those whatever things because it'll go to a good cause. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, folks. How about you, Navi? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Navi. I use she/her pronouns. I am playing uh, playing Rumor tonight. Who is? I think she's been nonstop goading the Prince of Tatters. Um, he tried to take her paddle and she sucker punched him. So we're gonna see how that plays out. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to that, um, and by that I mean running. Um, <laughs> how about you, Jamie? I'm Jamie. Uh, I use they them pronouns, and uh, I'm playing Malika the Shalons, the neck, and uh, Malika is dressed to the nines, but uh, ready to do whatever is necessary to deal with this irresponsible uh, tear in the veil uh, as we go over where this grimoire came from. We know that it came from Malika's mom. We don't know what it's doing here or what they're doing with it. This is so funny. I just got to the part in Dragon Age Origins where <laughs> Morgan from the game, I gave a grimoire. Anyway, it's really funny. I just found it amusing. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened earlier this morning. Anyway, so that's me. What about you, Kristen? Hi, I'm Kristen. I use she, her pronouns. I'll be playing Lenore R. Hawk, who thinks that she's dressed to the nines, but oh, poor sweet Lenore. Fashion is just not her strong suit. Um, I forgot but about it. it I pink, know. Right? It's pink. It's frilly. There's a large collar. It's just... It's I amazing. mean, it's am it's amazing. It's, it's just it's just it was amazing a few years ago, I think. And oh, Lenore, uh, but what she lacks in fashion, we I hope she makes up for in her ability to stop assassinations. We will we'll find out tonight. Uh, how you about know you, that Fashion oh. operates in dog years. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> Thank you. See, I, I like this. I think Lenore maybe is more stylish than she thinks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> how so about you, Drake? Great. Uh, I'm Drake. I'm going to be jamming tonight. I use he, him pronouns. Um, and I set all these horrible plots in motion. And you guys have been handing me daggers over the entirety of this game. And now all the chickens are coming home to roost. So I think we should probably just get right down to it, shouldn't we? Yeah, let's do this. Uh, yeah. When we left, we, we were in this kind of ghoulish charity auction at House Corvetto, uh, picking over the bones of the dead house Castenio auctioning off pieces of Ilrian history to the highest bidder. And in the course of that, our, our coterie here has kind of put their foot in it. Kor got challenged to a duel by Rekiala, the uh, Prince's Justice. I, uh, you know, uh, rumor has been fencing and uh, now sucker punching the Prince of Tatters who almost started a zombie apocalypse last week. Um, and then uh, Malika is, is there watching the veil sort of breaking down around this old grimoire, which, which belonged to uh, their mother. And then we have, oh, poor, poor Lenore right in the middle of it all with uh, this assassination attempt and the pistol shot has just rung out. Nice. I feel and like that's the moment we have to jump on real quick. We lost, we lost rumor. I know it's our, it, it happened so fast. So well, she had to run. She sucker she punched someone. Out, right? She had to get out. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't play with the Prince of Tatters. Um, okay. So let's, let's paint the scene here real quick. Um, what is the per first person who wants to, wants to chime in here? What is the, uh, the first, the first thing that happens right after this pistol shot goes off? Is it the crowd fleeing? Is it something shattering? Uh, what 
what is that like breathless moment right after the the gunshot? What is the first thing to break the silence right after that? I, I want to pause it that because Lenore was so awesome and smacked the arm of whoever shot that gun just before it went off, that it's this amazing chandelier that's hanging over everything and it's just shattering and glass is spraying everywhere because the, the shot went wide. Uh, and people are getting cut and scraped up, no serious injuries, but uh, this, this, this priceless chandelier has just been, it, it has just been destroyed. That's my personal posit. It's uh, beautiful. Just I like it. All right. Um, this feels almost like uh, this might be a resist because I was about to hurt somebody here. Um, if you want to roll, what do you think this is? Was was uh, was Core just in the right place at the right time? Was this like, was she scanning the crowd? Was, like, is this insight or is this prowess? What do you think this is? Is this? I mean, is this uh, is this mind or is this is this body? Um. You said core. Did you mean Lenore? Oh yeah, Lenore. Sorry. Me? No, no, no. I just want to make sure. Uh, I. Yeah, I think it's probably body. I think maybe Lenore just realized what was going to happen, or saw, was able to see what the person was going to do right before they did it, and so reacted physically. So I, I yeah, think it's I mean, body. Oh, you had the in the last session been searching, like right. been 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 searching for who was going on and you got the information past to you. So I feel like if anybody Lenore is in the position yep. when the gun comes out to 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 strike it away. Yeah. I just want to say because we usually forget that we have a plus one body to re resist yeah. yes. because of ironclad. So just add the plus one. Yeah, when you click I, on I it. Okay. Oh, and I will bring up the roll 20. Oh, not bad. All right, so it's going to cost you okay. two stress. Um, okay. But that's that's fine, because you're there. Uh, this person, um, middling tall, uh, dressed in kind of a, a big, heavy, like, frock coat that looks like it could very easily be, be concealing armor. Um, mm -hmm. This this hat kind of pulled low over the eyes. Like, could not scream, I, I am here to kill some folk any louder uh, if they were here with like a ask me how to be an assassin uh, sign on their chat. <laughs> um, but this flintlock pistol comes out and there's Lenore. Um, what, is it, what does it look like when, when Lenore kind of fouls this shot? Are you like grappling this person or are you just sort of body checking them? Um, is this even like a moment where you're struggling with the, the person for the gun? Like what does it look like? Um, I think that right before the shot goes off, Lenore sees them. And then I think if, then I think if the camera were to kind of focus on the gun itself, like it looks like they're aiming, it's gonna be a good shot. They're gonna hit their target square. And then Lenore just comes in and I think from behind hits, hits the back of the arm. So the gun goes up, shoots this beautiful priceless chandelier, unfortunately all over our crowd. <laughs> I love it, Sean. It's such a good idea. I, I can see it perfectly. I love it. Um, and I think, yeah, I think probably we're gonna, uh, I think we're gonna fight because I'm, I'm assuming this person is gonna try to either hurt me or get another shot off. So I think this is gonna be a fight. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Um, because as you come up and you just sort of follow this aim, I think they they immediately like wheel around trying to trying to you know this new and unexpected threat from an unexpected quarter. Why is Red Crow here? Oh. We'll get to that in a second. Don't worry. Okay. About we're, we're gonna we're gonna worry about this particular wrinkle in things. Uh, but um, just one final pointed question right before right before we leave you. Mm -hmm. um, was Red Crow pointing that pistol at Rumor? or at the Prince of Tatters? Uh, at Rumor, because that feels way more fun. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we can deal with, uh, with Red Crow and this, um, this scuffle uh, just in just a second. But awesome. right now we have, we have glass chandeliers falling from the ceiling. And right now Malika is kind of in the midst of that crowd 
as I recall last week, um, Malika, or the week before, uh, Malika was pushing through this crowd and moving toward this, this grimoire, which is, you're not even sure if a non-knack could really pick up this subtle fluctuation in the weave that is threatening to tear open um, just yet, but you know that if it's let go, it's probably going to be real noticeable and then there's gonna be a lot of screaming. But right now there's a chandelier coming down in that area. Um, are you fixated on this this tear in the veil or do you know that chandelier's coming down? Ooh, I think, um, I think considering that it's hard to miss the chandelier, even if Malika's focused, they're attuned to everyone else around them and everyone's fear and shock uh, will, will tear Malika um, towards the chandelier, I think, even as they're trying to keep track of the grimoire. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine that uh, in the wake of the pistol shot, you'd be so focused on your mother's grimoire and the weirdness that is manifesting around it that the, the you know, caller of the auction just seems to be ignoring. Um, even with that, with that happening, like there's that gun, gun, and everybody's starting to kind of run and scatter. And down comes the chandelier as like the last little bit of rope gives away. Um, you're right under it. Uh, is this a thing that you're gonna deal with as like uh, in like a sorceress fashion, or is this something that's where we're just diving out of, out of the way? Yeah, I think because there's someone who's trying to shoot someone. Uh... I'm going to use invocation and I'm going to channel arcane energy into the area to hold the chandelier in place and create a fog at the same time so that oh. it's hard for someone to shoot into it, I think. And hopefully Rumor can also run away in the fog <laughs> if she needs to run. <laughs> so I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna push myself heading towards Trauma Town. Uh, it's nice this time of year. To speak the curse. Uh, and I'm going to mark one stress to make it elemental in nature as well. So like it's this fog rolling in and crackling lightning holding onto the chandelier. Uh, but my main thing is, oh, and I also use a vulgar display of power because I'm not. Oh, heck yeah. Not Why not, right? <laughs> like I'm not hiding it. <laughs> no, I mean, like if we're, if we're, you know, following the cinematography here, like the, the smash cut through the credits is Lenore right behind this, uh, this person knocking the, the shot off. We kind of follow in slow motion, like almost bullet time, this bullet just sort of moving up toward the, uh, the rope securing the chandelier. And it like does that slow unravel thing. And then suddenly we're, we're right behind Malika and they sort of like turn. And as this is all going down, like still kind of, kind of fixated on the, uh, on the grimoire there's the, the gesture and then suddenly the air is thick with this fog that was just nowhere a second ago. Um, yeah. And how long do you think it's gonna hold? Yeah, I think, um, I also wanna say that I think Malika along with this well great display of power is saying in the name of Hospitalia, right? Like I'm really trying to like in, um, shame everybody for their bullshit. That's what I'm doing. Nice. <laughs> it's supposed to be a nice evening. Yeah, we're supposed instead... to all be civilized here, not <laughs> opening up elders' portals. Exactly. Um, but in terms of how long it'll hold, uh, I'm willing to to roll for it. I don't know how much it'll do between the vulgar display of power and pushing myself uh, for the invocation, but yeah. So for, for the invocation, you would have gotten risky standard. Like there could have been a thing that got, went wrong with the uh, vulgar display, push either one of those up one. I'm gonna push risky standard. I'll push it to risky great. Nice, nice. And then, yeah, let's see how it goes. It's not great. Oh, That's the okay. highest is a three. <laughs> what, what's happening here is that uh, I'm going to go ahead and tick the clock on this this arcane uh, terror here. The weave is ruffling in the um, in the, the wake of this vulgar display of power, and it's just drawing that energy in. And you're seeing, it's almost like um, if you've ever seen anybody like press against the back of a curtain. There is something on the other side of this curtain that's looking for a seam so that it can come through. 
Um, I started a four tick clock. We have two ticks um, on that clock so far. And uh, we'll see whether whatever's on the other side of the curtain is going to make it through. You're, you're safe for the moment. Does, does, is it visible to others now? Do, do, can, can not... I think it's, it's almost like a heat haze in the mm -hmm. air uh, for anybody who doesn't have the knack right now. Like it's almost as if um, right above the podium, it's getting really, really hot. Uh, there's a shimmer, a, a shifting in the air that's almost like, almost like a, a fume uh, and, mm -hmm. and less like a, uh, like a heat haze. So it's, it's getting weird. And like the, the auctioneer has taken a step back and is looking down at the, um, at the, uh, at the grimoire, but now it's, there's fog everywhere as well. So, you know, it could very well be a, you know, side effect of that happening, which is pretty weird. Um, right now, Malik is out of danger. Rumor you are, however, right next to the Prince of Tatters. You just sucker punched him. <laughs> and uh, at this point, like he's straightening up. There was a gunshot. He's looking around, and I think he's going to try and grab you and use you as a human shield. Rude. What a gentleman. Well, so dishonorable. It's not a, not a good guy. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, yeah, no, I think that um, as, as soon as the, the gunshot goes off, um, I, I'm willing, if he's faster, I'm, I'm willing to uh, say that he can try and grab her. But as soon as that gunshot went off, she was like making friends with the floor. Oh, okay. <laughs> she hears a boom and she just lays down. Okay. <laughs> let, me, nope. let, me, let me adjust the fiction. <laughs> let, me, let me adjust this fiction because I think he's going to, he's going to like with a, with a hiss, like drop to a knee and he's going to like grab you by the collar. And he's like, I don't know who you and your friends think you are. And he's going to try and like pull you up. And like, he's going to try and put you in like a, an arm bar and like use you as this human shield and make his escape. Okay. Um, in, I, wow. I actually didn't see that coming. Cause I thought for sure he had something to do with the, um, what was happening with the grimoire. I, now I'm, now I'm suspecting that whatever he was doing with the grimoire is like, already coming to fruition so he just wants to get out of dodge and that makes me even a little bit more scared about what's happening right now um, i think you should take credit for saving his life by the way right, yeah. <laughs> the shot was in your direction <laughs> nobody besides lenore knows who it was actually targeted at <laughs> no, I, I think that like at this point she's she's definitely like she's not she isn't like being scruffed um like he's trying to pull her into position to, to drag her out of there um i think that i'm going to try and basically counter that with the maneuver she's just going to try and be really wormy here and squeeze out she's like look it's been real fun but i gotta go well we know we know that you uh you do like um what do you call it uh like back alley combatives with your orphan friends i think you're probably <laughs> yeah, right right <laughs> Pretty good at this. So. This, is how, this is how you shiv the Prince of Tatters. <laughs> exactly. Like, right. Go for the groin. <laughs> yeah, the solar plexus and the instep and the nose. And the. Uh oh, we just lost you. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, mm, let's see. I don't. I let's see. I don't want to get drug out of this place by this guy. Mm -hmm. Um, can I hear a devil's bargain or a lady's favor here? Lady's favor. We were here. just playing Blades in the Dark. Yeah, we were. <laughs> I could tell you were like prowess or insight. I'm like, it's body and mind. That's, that's, that's the wrong thing. Uh, right. So um, let's see. A lady's favor to worm out of the Prince of Tatters grip. Mm -hmm. hmm. I mean, if, if the chandel I throw out an idea. You, yeah. You, I don't know if you want a lot of attention on you right now, Rumor, but um, I imagine if you like screamed unhand me you ruffian uh this man is trying to attack me uh you would you would get a lot of probably unwanted attention for you but it might also distract him a moment you know everyone would see you you'd have no way of like not having been noticed but at this kind of event it does seem like uh like you know, like it i like it i like it too so all right we're yeah, taking it good good call um yeah screaming bloody murder is good for a dice here <laughs> Uh, what's my position? Um, I think that like he's not trying to hurt you here, mm -hmm. um, but he is. A, he just wants me to absorb bullets. Yeah, exactly. You're no good to him. <laughs> he's gonna hurt you directly. Right. He's <laughs> waiting for somebody else to hurt you. Um, I think that uh, that you're in a risky position mm -hmm. just because like there might be somebody taking a shot at you mm -hmm. that he thinks is taking a shot at him. Um, I think that uh, your effect is going to start limited though. Because um, he's all scronk. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a grappler on the neck and like he's... Okay, I'm gonna use that, I think I'm gonna use that extra die to bump it up to standard and okay. see if I can wiggle away here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You can. Um, <laughs> tell, me, tell me how you do it. 
Um, now, yeah, that's just kind of one of those things where she's just a little bit slippery. I think that maybe she's more flexible than he's anticipating. Yeah. Like she's like sneaking an extra joint in there or something because he goes to arm bar and she just slips out like a snake. She's like, it's been real fun. And then she books it. She literally just turns around and runs. <laughs> Who taught you how to do that? Um, Lordy. Uh, I think she may have had like a... Um, like a mentor when she was younger, someone that she looked up to, and maybe they didn't even teach her intentionally. She was just kind of idolizing them and watching all the stuff they were doing. She's like, I can do that. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough, cool. Um, yeah, and it's executed flawlessly because like, he's trying to pull you in and you just like an eel just slip down and out of that before you can set the hooks in. Uh, and you're, you, have your, you have your breathing room. And after screaming, it sounds like there are uh, footsteps um, moving in your direction through this big thick fog. Uh, you could call them over if you wanted, but that's um, that's up to you whether or not you're you're looking to to get some allies to go run down this ruffian or or, or not, or if you're just looking for a an easy exit. No, I think under in the position, um, like the fog is there, and the chandelier hasn't quite hit the floor, right? So mm -hmm. Malik has that like under control, but I know that there's this problem with the grimoire that is levitating. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so they I, should not do that. Books <laughs> just really need to behave. Well, <laughs> this is a problem. Uh, so I think that um, what it is is that rumors kind of like um, objective minded. She's going from one issue to the next issue. So like with no intervening frames of animation, sure. she's bolting away from the Prince of Tatters towards the levitating grimoire she's i'm gonna put myself in position to either give a set of action or an assist to lenora when her turn comes around oh okay all right interesting um yeah because i think the you go from like the prince of tatters is trying to set the hooks in okay that was one problem but we're done with that now i know we have this other this other thing that was uh was going to cause us problems and now you're in that place to to set up the rest of your cover mm -hmm. that's cool um core all hell is breaking loose down there on the actual auction um, floor. Yeah. Uh, but right now, like it's it's you and you were you and um, and Cipriano have you know separated. You were talking to the Maritzi delegation, Alicia, the uh, the Marish diplomat, mm -hmm. um, and she told you all about Reciala. Right. Um, but that's that's only half of this problem because Benedicto is also. Like in the midst of all this going down, like Benedicto Corvetto, this sort of unflappable Saturnian uh, tyrant, kind of comes over, and um, you know he's still got a champagne glass in one hand, is looking at all of this going on down there. Like this is probably one of the more boring events that he's hosted, and he says, "Lady Cor, I hear tell that you will fence Reciala tonight." And I think Cor is acknowledging him. She's not. She's not. Uh, she's not ignoring him. But she's definitely looking at this like cloud of chaos, figuring, okay, that cloud of chaos is probably her coterie. This is probably they're doing. And she's kind of waiting to see who's going to run out of it. So when the Prince of Tatters runs out, she wants to be in his way. Uh, but you know, we'll see if that actually happens. Maybe he runs out the opposite direction. Maybe she can't. I think she's up on a. I think she's up like we just sort of described at one point, sort of like dancing up like the foyer up the stairs to like the mezzanine level. I think she's on the mezzanine when he comes and greets her and she like nods and acknowledges him, but she's definitely looking at this. And she says, yes, I've heard she's um, quite an impressive duelist. Um, it's been a while since I've gotten a good chance to test my blade. And I kind of look like wink at Cipriana because last time I was dueling was with her. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so so you're, you're, you're you're sort of taking this in stride at the same time while remaining watchful over like that's all that's all us that's got to be us. Uh, I, yeah i just assumed that everything including the shot was us like i don't even i didn't see who fired it i just figure everything is us i mean after the go, seagulls right like, yeah but i'm not gonna wait into that cloud i'm gonna wait till something comes out of the cloud and then i'm gonna jump it you know yeah when, when you've got a target that's when you'll uh when you'll yeah. actually engage here uh benedicto like kind of sniffs and he's like they call her the Prince's Justice. You have a passing fancy for justice as well, don't you? I am committed to it, one might say. Uh, almost Excellent. like a monogamous relationship you can't break. Quite so. I have been given to understand because of your recent, um, I hesitate to use the word hysterics, but. Um, she does look at him at that. Like, yeah, like you're, what? You're what are you calling um, hysterics? We're sitting here drinking champagne while chaos is breaking out. <laughs> he looks down. Quiet. 
That is rather down there, though. Uh, <laughs> no, he, he says, I, I hesitate to use the word hysterics, uh, pageantry, the recent pageantry here at the House of Corvado. Uh, certain things that occurred uh, following the race of antlers. You take my meaning. Oh, yes, very well. As far as I know, House Pataglia and House Corvetto are in our, our, our bosom buddies after the events that followed the, um, the, the fall of the race of antlers. I believe we, uh, remu re we, we uh, alleviated uh, a very uh, threatening situation for, for the Embarrassing, house. yes. We are, of course, the very best of friends and it's for that reason that I and the other magisters, uh, the other advocates of Ilrian have decided to grant your request and we will allow you to take the fifth exam upon your way to becoming a barrister of our fine city. However, we do have something of an abbreviated timeline. You will be fencing the prince's justice. You will show us what justice is worth, where you come from. I think as soon as like she got the sense that he was hinting at, um, that he was hinting at like her getting her barrister's license, she forgot all about that shit down there. Like she was, she'd hardly been paying attention to him. Sorry, friends, Prince Tatters is getting away. Her uh, on her own. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, she's not gonna like leave the scene, but she's taking him seriously for the first time because she she figured he he was just messing with her, and and she like genuinely looks away and looks back at him. And and says, very well. I hadn't I hadn't expect to kill two birds with one stone. But um, tell me, uh, I haven't I haven't heard the terms of this of this duel. I I can't imagine anyone would want the princess justice to be killed or inca or seriously incapacitated. She'd be unable to perform her duties. Well, um, Rekiala is a formidable opponent. Um, she is a logistician in a in addition to being a, a barrister and a duelist herself. She is something of your dark mirror, actually. Um, in that case, I think it is only right and fitting that you meet with Rekiala's second, uh, Contrea. Uh, Contrea will d deliver the terms of this particular engagement. Uh, typically three passes to blood is traditional. Uh, I would be, I would be delighted. I would call my second, but she's down there somewhere. <laughs> Touch her. Oh, I'm, I plan to. And, you know, she sort of looks back again, like waiting for someone to pop out of this fog of chaos or to hear her name be called out, in which case she would jump into it. But, you know. Collect her directly. We, we will have business within the hour. Oh, do, you have, you have nothing to fear. I will, um. I will prove myself one way or the other this evening. Um, and uh, I actually have an idea for the dueling grounds, as it were. I don't know if you have something in mind. I did, uh, but I'd like to hear yours. Um, mine is that for showmanship, that there are these ropes hanging down and there's this sort of platform on the ground and the duelists both step onto the platform and then the ropes pull, or chains or whatnot, pull it up and so they're elevated maybe 10 feet over the air so everybody can get a really nice view of the whole thing. And one way to, there's lots of ways to lose, but falling off the edge is another one of them. So yeah, I was going to have you guys um, basically on like a, a lattice of like slack lines. Um, so oh, nice. yeah, yours is, yours is good. <laughs> yours is good. Uh, At any rate, wherever the, obviously like we're, we're, we're clearly of the same mind. Like we have a similar thing that like, it's clear where the dueling ground is. It's not like it's going to happen just anywhere. And so no, we're not, I, we're not taking this uh, down into that like fog down there. We're, we're, this right. is going to be a, this is going to be a show. Right. So I think um, Core sort of like, like cocks her vision at the, where the dueling uh, area of the manor is and says, I'll be there and uh, I'll go find my second. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and Benedicto, you know, nods and he's like, this wasn't your doing, was it? He looks down um, into like the, the fog and the, the electricity and the um, streaming. There's a part of Core that is like, no, this isn't mine. But then she's like, House Pataglia, honor and tradition. I want to be established. I'm obsessed with earning my thing. She says, I'm sure that my coterie is involved. I'm sure that they're doing what is necessary. Um, 
and uh, I will uh, uh, I will find out. I, I will know more soon. And she just hand plants the banister. She just like puts her hand on the banister and like kicks up over and jumps down into the fog. Like, okay, you told me to get my second. Here I go. <laughs> And we were treated to just like this this last like kind of split second scene of Benedict like watching you vault over this banister. How lucky we are that we are such good friends. <laughs> like he has as one last drink and like nice. as you vanish into the fog here. Um, Lenore, uh, right before all merry hell broke loose and now you're in this interminable fog and there's just like pounding feet and screaming all around you at this point, but you're here grappling with Red Crow. Um, mm -hmm. They're wearing uh, like livery that is almost, you know, a, a um, dead giveaway for like a mercy. They are dressed like a mercy. Um, do you have any idea what they're doing here? Um, so I think that Lenore, whether this is a good idea for her or not, I think that she actually, when she realizes it's Red Crow, she pauses because she's shocked. Um, and we have a history. And so I think that she pauses, d doesn't take her hands off of the arm that's holding the gun, right? Out of like, that's like her instinct. So she doesn't actually take a step back, but she pauses and is going to ask what are you doing here? But her thought is whether she's right or wrong is that um, Red Crow has been hired and sent here for rumor because of what happened during the race with the Prince. Um, and so I think that's where Lenore's mind is and is quickly trying to race through what other reasons Red Crow would be here before they get a one up on her. Yeah, um, so you ask this, you, you ask Red Crow, what, what are you doing here? And Red Crow, you know, she has this empty pistol in one hand and you can see that like she glitters uh, underneath like this big big heavy coat mm. and she's it's hard to bristle with weapons at like a society engagement but you can see just very um very carefully tucked away yeah, like there's a reputation for yeah, right? there's a there's a glitter of quillians uh in in you know the um what are those called the lapels of her uh, of her jacket mm. she's she's got blades about her um and you know she leans in and she's like isn't it obvious what i'm doing here i'm cleaning up your mess what what mess i think lenore is genuinely caught off guard in this moment unfortunately yeah. hands still on her though oh yeah no we're not we're not letting her go <laughs> she's not defanged yet um yeah she she leans in she's like what do you mean your mess the race of antlers the tar all of it it all leads back to you and yours. I'm cleaning up. I don't need you to clean up my messes. You weren't the one who asked. Who is the one that asked? When was the last time you talked to the Sisters of the Mercies? And in GM voice as well. When was the last time you talked to the Sisters of the Mercies? <laughs> <laughs> and also, when would, did you actually? Um, I think it's been a little while. Um, I don't have an exact time frame in mind, but I think if like there's a common check-in, I think that she's missed one or two. <laughs> missed a couple, sure. <laughs> and, missed a couple. And here's, here's um, you know, Red Crow and like, like at this point, like you've got a hand on her and she's got a hand on you and you guys mm -hmm. are in close and like almost clinched. And she's like, you smell like a monster. <sighs> well, Cor and I. <laughs> well, you see. Oh um, no. What happened? Hold on a second. Okay. Sorry, friends. Uh, we have an additional. This is exciting. <laughs> this is exciting. Happy birthday. But it's not actually birthday, Marcus. So thanks for joining us. Marcus, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick you out of the call if I can't. Oh, you're gone. Hi, Marcus. <laughs> That's the buddy. second time he's done that. He's no. zoom bombed me, missing the uh, birthday party link twice. <laughs> Showed up being like, "Happy birthday!" I'm like, "Wrong day, Marcus." <laughs> Sorry about that. At all. 
<laughs> no, I love that. It's never happened before. It was very exciting. <laughs> it was such a good time. Um, I think Lenore a hundred percent like sidesteps that. There's no way that Lenore is going to show an emotion or give a response to something to Red Crow about that, especially right now. Do you think she's going to let it go? <sighs> no, but I also think that Lenore can use what's going, all this chaos to her advantage. So I think that she, Lenore says um, that, is, that is a discussion for another time there's too much chaos here. You're, you're going to be noticed any second. That's fair. It feels almost like you're trying to get her to like stand down here. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, do you think that you're, you're operating in her best interests here? I think so. I, I think that there's a part, like I know that we, um, that Red Crow and Lenore are not like friends, but we have a complicated history. And I think that there's so much guilt there still about Martina. Um, and so, yeah, I think that in this moment, Lenore, Lenore wants answers before Red, anyone else gets to Red Crow. Okay. Um, so just, just judging the fiction here, this yeah. feels almost like you're, you're trying to, to, I think you might be trying to like sway or command here, uh, whether you're disregarding her feelings and saying, hey, look, stand the fuck down and we'll talk about this later. Yep. Um, or like, look, you know me, I'm not a monster. Why are you shooting at my friends? Like, let's, yeah. let's just think about this a second. We'll go somewhere else. We'll talk about this. We'll be, uh, we'll be okay here. I'm, we I'm going to say if it's okay, that it's more command because I don't, I, I think that's the attitude that Lenore takes with this person. That's the vibe I'm getting. Is I, can, yeah. I can see that. This is you know? not the time. Yeah. Bro, we will like, we will, we'll, we'll discuss this, but not now. Right. But, yeah, I feel that. Um, okay. So command. So I think this is the command. I think it's, um, I think it's at this point risky. It could very easily turn desperate. Um, Red okay. Crow is angry. She's hurt. And uh, at this point, um, you smell like a monster. And she was here to, you know, end some kind of threat that you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Is so this a time to use terrifying? This might very well be a time to use terrifying. Um, I mean, yeah. if if you truly smell like a monster, which I think that's, you do. That's what I was thinking. If there like might you. be, I might have caught her off guard with that. And if she's a little bit concerned, I can, I can play on that. Okay. So command and then, I'm sorry, you said risky? Risky or, with okay. your, with your terrifying, this, uh, this will give you greater effect. Oof. Okay, it's great effect. So it jumps down to standard. I think um, that Red Crow in this moment like looks at you and like her eyes are, are hard and they're uh, they're unkind, unblinking. But you basically tell her to stand the hell down. Um, whatever it is that that she was here to do, she's not doing it mm -hmm. because you have everything well in hand. Um, I think like she sucks in a breath through her through her clenched teeth and she how can i ever trust you again and like she kind of like takes one step back and she's like after everything and i think she takes like that that next step back and she's like rapidly fading into the fog and she's like you're goddamn right we're going to talk about this and like she, she takes that, that extra step back and she's like, like there's a sharp whistle and like there's, there's motion in the area around you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but it's almost like she's calling off the dogs. Okay. Okay. I think Lenore, I, so I know that when she says after everything, Lenore definitely feels 
something. Lauren does it feel all the time. Some right. guilt or something. something. Is, right. This, this weird thing is happening. This She's weird thing. Feeling. I don't know what this is. But I think that automatically makes Lenore double down. So I think she is just hard. She is just holding on to being terrifying and commanding and not going to give an inch yeah. regardless. Like, you're a mercy and she's not. What the fuck is she doing here? Yeah. Yield. And like, no matter how she cuts at you, you're not going to let that, not going to let that through. Right. Why would you, right? We, we're on the job right now. Feelings far, far second. Um, we box but, those up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> up on a shelf over there by the dagger rack. Um, <laughs> okay. So you've, you've navigated that for the, for the moment. Um, okay. We don't know why she was going to take a shot at Rimmer, um, aside from the fact that you all are in deep with some weird stuff and smelling of, you know, monsters. Okay. Um, Malika, uh, at this point, like you are, tell me, are you you're getting closer to this to this book, right? Like you've been walking toward it this whole time as the uh, as the fog kind of rolls in. Is that fair and accurate to say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my best to contain what's happening uh in time i also thought the prince of tatters was involved but since he hasn't shown up yet then um i'm going to do what i can to to heal the tear and uh yeah yeah and basically stop things from imploding hopefully that's the that's the goal can i can uh i i, I was also like interested in the prince of tatters but like narratively speaking i think i'm less um, is it okay if one core hops down, she lands beside you? you know I mean? Yeah, actually, I was I was thinking <laughs> that's because I I rolled a three. I may have called out like, where the where is Lady Core? <laughs> like, and that's exactly when you show up, nice. <laughs> just to rub it in. <laughs> is that, uh, awesome, I love it. And I think visually speaking, you know, the book was levitating or whatnot. So it, it, even though it's covered by a fog, that's the last thing I think Cora saw that she could, you know, before the thing. So it, I think it makes sense. Um, but I like the idea, uh, yeah, that she, 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 you know, lands on a thud, you know, comes down to the knee because she's just jumped off the, you know, mezzanine and uh, is there, uh, is there at your side. And uh, I say, I'm so glad that you could join us, Lady Core. Um, she sort of looks up and she says, this is you, isn't it? I, I give out a long suffering sigh. It's not me, but I assure you, I'm going to do all I can to claim the power that's here. I'm sure whatever you did was necessary and I'll fight to prove that it was. And uh, Malika looks a little surprised, a little taken aback. Yeah, there's something, there's something kind of going on with Cora right now. She seems in her head a little bit and she's not barbing at you like she sort of normally would um oh yeah and in fact i look at you and i say that wig you're wearing you haven't changed wigs for several are you all right yeah she um she kind of like brushes it and the the the, the, the gold alloyed you know uh plates kind of she, they got a little like little tangled she started brushes them clean she's like i think i'll need to wear this wig just a little bit longer um uh i didn't expect a duel but she sort of like shakes it and you kind of hear like the metal plates clacking this is core's armor by the way this is her one armor is this wig is this metal cheap wig and uh <laughs> make sure it's flexible later yeah Perfect. exactly so um I, i'm sure it will come off by before the evening's out but let's tend to and she sort of like looks at like the general direction uh and so she's there to support you i want to you know i'm gonna i think and i i navi i think you said rumor was as well so i think i think we're i i think we're, we're yeah like like rumors like getting in position around this levitating book and like she's trying to figure out what to do and then she looks over at this tender moment you guys are sharing she's looking between the book and you guys and like when you look over at her she's just going <laughs> The book. <laughs> ah, ah. You remember the book? <laughs> uh, Lenore's like, I have no time for feelings. Core's like, I have time for nothing but feelings. <laughs> Everything else will wait. My feelings right now. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Um, I have a pointed question for for Jamie by way of Malika. Um, so the same there's a there's a feeling in the air like a like something familiar. Um, I want you to tell me why it reminds you of Arturo. You're I think at that moment, like uh, Malika looks up towards a tear that's forming, and then they start to see sketches across it, and it looks exactly like what Arturo was drawing the last time uh, that she saw him. And so uh, when when she realizes that, like you, you really visibly see the color drain from Malika's face, and Malika turns to Lady Cor and says, we have to, there's someone that I need to protect. We have to make sure that whatever this is, it doesn't come through. We have to stop it here for the sake of the city, for the sake of what matters most. Do you think in a moment of weakness or defiance or something in the past that, 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 that Malika would have either told Cor about Arturo or, or, or if not told about the specifics about Arturo, but like mentioned his name even without going into all these details? Do you think that would happen? Or do you think that is something she keep that, that Malika keeps to themselves? I'd like to think that we have this brief flashback that when Malika found Arturo as an infant, Lady Cora was there with her. Nice. And I think you know that I brought him to the orphanage. Yeah. So, so you do know of him. Awesome. What's the name of the orphanage? It has, it has, Navi, it's got a name, right? Oh yeah, I think it's in. It's um, in I think it's just Sister Aveline's, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's not going to say his name, but she says no harm will come to Sister Aveline's while we're here because she knows that's where that's where Arturo is. She, she's got your back. I'll stab it. I'll channel with you. I don't know how to channel. It's okay. Anybody can try it. I got you. It's force of will, right? I got plenty of that. I got plenty of that. Um, okay, last last pointed question before I I start actually like using some knife here. Um, so these sketches that Arturo does have been, you know, hinting at something dark and terrifying, uh, something that should by no means be allowed to, to happen. Uh, what was that most recent sketch of? Like, is it a monster? Is it like a, a strange storm or something? Like what, what is this thing that he is sketching? Yeah, um, I think the last thing he sketched it was all teeth and tongues and then all these words over and over again, the feast, the feast shall begin and it will consume all. I I don't I don't want to be here right now, so we can wrap this up. Oh Jamie. <laughs> Thank you for this gift. Um, yes, uh, that's what's happening. Like as you're as you're watching like the curtain. Um, of reality, the uh, the world that is not the weave. Um, what's pushing against it is long, kind of salubrious tongues and teeth and fangs, and it's you thought it was faces, but it's literally just mouths. Um, and that's what's on the other side. What are you gonna do about it? Yeah, I'm going to try to force uh, the weave closed, uh, and I think I'm going to pull out a fine arcane focus. Um, that might be a good idea, yeah. yeah. In order to do so. Can, can, can the uninitiated uh, put any links together between the book itself and this, and this, um, and this rift? Um, uh, I think I, I, what I'm asking is, could I, can, can I study what's happening with this book? I, I'm, I'm wondering if like pages are flipping open, if there's any sort of animation that would allow, uh, core who can't channel, but who can notice the details to, to aid Malika in this. Does that seem reasonable? Or is it sort of like, it's all behind the veil and there's not really any way core is gonna be able to study that? Yeah, I think, I think that it makes total sense that, you know, if you are, you're watching this thing, if you're um, trying to take note of how it's behaving and how it's acting, like you, you know what from weird, like you guys have been around oh, yeah, quite a lot yeah, of Yeah, right. Um, so that, that being the case, I think it, uh, it makes total sense that you might be able to, to study here. Um, is that, uh, is that something that you're 
you're interested in helping out with. Um, Rumor, I know you're you're right there and like probably closer than anybody. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you want to use that as a setup action for uh, Malika, then I can assist Malika and we can give her all the bonuses. That's, That's what I was thinking. That's, That's what I was thinking. Point. Is that yeah? We, it, just, yeah. That totally makes sense to me. Um, you are That's you are uninitiated. It's not necessarily your uh, your particular bailiwick, but first of all, you've been around a lot of weird, and also you've been around a lot of Malika. So um, yeah, I think so I think. Things. Some of these things have a tendency to rub off, right? So. Right, right, right. I think it's Malika. Uh, remember that symbol? You showed that to me on, remember that, that symbol on the book? You showed, I remember you telling me about that when we were looking in the in the uh, Battaglia libraries for the, for the Necromancer's Hill, because this is your mom's book, right? I don't know it's your mom's book, but I know you, you know, mentioned things about it. So I'm going to try to recall to your mind the uh, the significance of, of the glowing symbol on the book right now that you nice, might have nice. overlooked as you're focusing on the rift. Yeah. So yeah. Makes What's sense. Uh, I I feel like by definition my effect is limited because I just can't really know that much. Um, sure. I, I don't know what you what you think. And I'm fine with that. It's a set. I, 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 I was thinking risky limited as a starting place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that sounds great. That that feels like it's the the right. Uh, the right place for me. So let's let's give that a whirl. Um, bah, bah, bah. Why do I did I have roll twenty up until the moment I needed it? Um, because Murphy. That's why. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna just study. Risky. Limited. Limited. Okay. <laughs> It's because Malika's involved. It draw, she draws out my inner six. Yeah, I can't even hurt it's you. It's so that. true. It's so true. You're if always rolling sixes to like help own, me. I would just be like, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think I wanna I think I wanna specifically recall um, you know, some book in House Pataglia is that you maybe tried to piece some of these spells together from memory. And and I say, you know, remember the tome of the of the uh, of the of the three fallen dr uh, dragons. Uh, that's the symbol that you, that you talked about it. That's that's the incantation. And she starts like whispering the beginning of an incantation, but she doesn't know it well and she can't form it. But I think it's a it, it's a trigger in your memory. It's like, she's never gonna do it, but you, you, you certainly could. Perfect, Rock perfect. Tie. No. And I, oh. Yeah, no. and as you, you start seeing it, I reach over uh, and, and like my mouth is close to your mouth. I'm like mimicking the same uh invocation as i started close, of course because I'm, I'm reaching behind your neck because i was going to say the fine arcane focus is a necklace that i gave you to wear tonight uh and so i take it off nice and wrap it around my my wrist to turn back to the book uh but you know i i i, I give a face that's close to a thank you i don't say it out loud but it's there jamie having gear that you have placed on other people's ornamentation is like the most boss move i've ever seen i just want to call that out like where what's your load oh i have an arcane tokus it's the necklace she's wearing but that's my gear that's so fucking awesome i love it thank you so do we get that moment where like she just reaches out for the pendant and like just snaps it off real quick <laughs> or is this like oh. a gentle moment oh yeah it's a, it's a very unnecessarily gentle moment of like yes. and, oh. from the back <laughs> oh, wow, that's worse. and letting the necklace drag across the neck yeah yeah, yeah absolutely Whew, I got chills. Uh, yeah. Um, so with your arcane focus with, uh, with core, um, you know, remembering with you the, this, uh, this book of the three fallen dragons, uh, the incantation of the confluence of ravens, like, um, what, uh, what are you going to do here? Are you going to basically like do it in reverse and try and like hold it back? Or are you trying to like channel this somewhere else or... What is what is Malika doing? What what is Malika hoping? Ooh, yeah, I think what I'm what I know I have to do is I have to force whatever it is back to sleep within Arturo. Like I have to push that energy back, whatever this is. They're trying to wake him up and force a transformation of some kind. Uh, so I'm trying to channel the energy back through the veil towards him, where it's safe. Okay, and. This is this is one of those things like Arturo is is the vessel for this energy and it's leaking out here, right? Is that is that what we're doing here? Um, and so so long as it's within Arturo, 
not allowed to escape, it's going to be safe, safely slumbering. That's the hope, right? Absolutely. Okay. So I have, I have the evilest lady's favor to throw out there. Yeah. What, 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 what? This is all Drake. This is all Drake's to approve, but this is my suggestion for a lady's favor. You know what makes things that are all mouths and really hungry go to sleep? A little snack, a little tasty bite, a little something, something to eat. So I'm just going to throw out there. I feel like as a lady's favor, your choice, and also Drake can certainly veto this, you might give it someone just to just to throw into the little vortex to get numb. I, I, I did want to throw in the Prince of Tatters. You know, it's like, papa. <laughs> I love this so much. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Feels like that would be we would have to get lay hands on him and do that, but I'm I'm for yeah that. I get that's, it I get that's it that's what you if that's what yeah. you're about but uh, yeah I do feel like I could well you know um, I could offer something else for uh, for the god to feast on mm -hmm. yeah I think I know that it's connected to my mother I'm willing to feed it all of the good memories I have of my mother. I like that. I like That's that. So sad. I was I, gonna feed it gentleman. I like it a lot. Um, I think it's uh, it's worse than that. You're going to have to surrender your memories, and you're gonna have to surrender the grimoire. Oof. Yeah, so I not just so. your memory, but hers too. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm willing to do that if it means that Arturo is going to be safe. Wow. It feels very conclusive wow. as well. And so much as like, if this book was the thing that was gonna let that free, if you're just shoving the book, if, if, if the book is destroyed or absorbed or fed upon in this process, then mm -hmm. you know you know that you're putting it away for good or putting it away till someone else finds a creepy book that could, you know, this book won't be able to release it again, at least. Yeah, I think so. And I think this would be Malika's way of saying for sure that she'll have to find power her own way, not through her mother's, basically. Oh, so good. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So. With that being said, um, so long as you're willing to to surrender the, the grimoire and, and the memories of, of your mother, uh, I think that that's certainly uh, worth an extra die. I think we're going to start off with your uh, fine arcane focus. We're going to be in a risky position. Uh, we're going to start with limited effect. What do you, are you happy with that? Are you okay with this taking a while? Um, because, oh, yeah. Well, I think it's a set of action. You automatically you have a set of action. Yes, yeah, so you can have and a set of action. And an assist waiting in the wings. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think with the set of action, I'm going to put it up to a standard okay. uh, effect. And then I'm going to drop it down to desperate so I can get it up to great. So. <laughs> Let's go. Let's, Let's see how it goes. Let's go, uh, desperate. Let's go. <laughs> I think you have bonus two dice right now. One from the assist and yeah, one from yeah, the exactly. lady saver. But what's the assist look like, Navi? What is what is rumor doing to like aid in this? I think it, I think I think it's a classic rumor moment where like she's like like reached into like this weird like pocket full of just weird arcane stuff and like she's going through it like no no not that once again just kind of tossing stuff out like that's not going to help us and then she comes up with this like this like talisman that um like malika would probably recognize as something that like is only exists to kind of amplify like power and she's going to hold up like an extra focus and basically so she can bounce it off on the other side of the book so she's going to be holding this up and like acting like a like a beacon on the other side so she can fill the room with uppercut <laughs> Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, that all right. Put the on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see how it goes. In my mind, this is like you pouring like the hot sauce on the uh, 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 on top of the um, you know to, to make something spicier. Whoa, that's a lot of dice. That's and I'm so glad many that's a dice. Lot of dice but four. our highest is still our four. But that's, that's still okay. good. It's okay because it's not a one. Right? <laughs> yeah. There were two ones there, and we don't want those. <laughs> Um, okay, so a mixed success here. I, I think that the, the mixed success means that there's going to be some fallout. Um, now, I'm wondering if I were a extra dimension extra dimensional entity made of 
you know, mouths and teeth and tongues. <laughs> and somebody just threw hot sauce on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if I'm in the midst of eating all of these memories and coming through just enough to be able to consume this book, how could I make mischief here? Um, I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if I would try and take a bite out of the, the person who is right next to the book that I'm eating, <laughs> or if I am more interested in devouring more memories than I should. Ooh. And it I feels like that's I want... the right track, right? Like that, like, yeah. it feels like the thing that this is hungry for is maybe not flesh, but, but maybe thoughts and memories and, and, and ideas. If that's that, that's what we're going on. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that because it, it feels more eldritch and unapproachable if it's not just eating folks when mm -hmm. it's actually just gorging itself on memories. Um, yes. Uh, so Malika, I, think you are going to take level three harm. I think that you are going to be like amnesiac, um, you know, at least until you get this scene too. Nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to try resisting just because I feel like it makes sense. Yeah, you have special armor that would probably apply to you. Oh, that's right. Coterie, so. oh, I will use it, the special armor. Yeah. yeah. Perfect, perfect. You've got your particular wards and every your your seals all devised to you know resist against this sort of thing. Uh, so that's going to knock it down to level two right away. Um, do you still want to resist, or do you want uh, the level two like befuddled? Yeah, I think um, I kind of like this dramatic moment of Malika still trying to resist because. There's a moment where it's trying to feast on the memories that Malika has of Lenore and Rumor and Kor, and Malika doesn't want to let go of that even for just a moment. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I'm going to go. I'd kind of like to do a protect action if you're into it. <gasps> okay. Uh, I feel like the way Malika might remember things is if she had like a stimulus. Like if you look like you were starting to forget. Core might say, don't forget this, and then just plant a big old kiss on your lips, because I feel like that would be a way to keep you connected to the world. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to steal, I don't want to steal your resist, because I think willpower is awesome, but I feel like that would be a oh, way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think, I think the reason that happens is because the memories start to leak and you see all the times Malika wanted to kiss you and yeah. they didn't. Nice. All right. Um, this is this is a bit of a stretch, but I think I'm resisting with body. I feel like oh, yeah, you are physically just planting. Oh, hell yeah. This is a body resist. <laughs> In a lot of ways. <laughs> So there's a plus one to body because of exactly. <laughs> <Chris>. iron class. <laughs> All right, I think I programmed in the sheet. We'll see if this rolls the right amount of dice. It did, and that was not great. All right, taking three stress. Right, it's three stress. You're fine. You don't need that for this duel coming up. I don't need that for the duel coming up. It's fine. Oh, good. It's fine. Well, you see, uh, you know, all the various bits you have to have tied behind your back for this. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, what? I, I really want to want to get somebody's um, you know visualization as to like what this assault looked like. Was this a thing where like just Malika was locking eyes with the the thing beyond the threshold and just like like a dribble of blood, or is this like a a thing that is just like are we seeing like some kind of thing in the environment? Like how do we know that she is fighting this titanic battle right before Kor comes and like plants this kiss on her? Yeah, I think the way it looks is that Malika starts to waver like that same heat shimmer and split apart. And that's where you can see the memories in between, like holding them together, like starting vision. to break apart. Like she's, yeah, she's, she, she, she's better, fragmenting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. This little astral projection of you kind of like leaving and then it, it yeah. jumps back with the kiss. Perfect. Sure, that's like the best special effect. High budget, high budget. High, high budget, budget, man. Hey, if they could do it, if uh, Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme could do it, on top of this, I better believe it. Yeah, but in that in that moment where you guys where you guys kiss, uh, all of those memories like slam back together, and like you manage to to shrug off the effect of this hunger from beyond, 
uh, and the book is gone. Um, your uh, pendant there, uh, rumor, has gotten so hot that it is like starting to like run like candle wax. The chain is still cool, but the uh, the pendant itself is like gone. Um, and like the fog in the room is like starting to clear. And uh, the few people who are still here, like like they're kind of caught in that classic Ilrian, like I'm not sure whether or not to applaud, like this, do we, do we clap here? Do we, do we give them money? Like, um, they're kind of looking around and like, finally somebody, some brave soul, um, you know, very obviously not wearing a mask, just sort of. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so just soaking that in. I'm like doing these big courtly bows standing up on the table. It's fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's like, there's a couple of minutes where, where people start like coming up and they're asking, oh, and who are you with? Uh, and just, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of questioning. Um, you identify a couple of them as, as broadsheet reporters, um, trying to get who, who it is that started, ended, saved, whatever. Um, and then there's a scream from behind the, uh, the place where the auctioneer was standing and, uh, somebody comes running out. This, they, you know, they are kind of knock me. This, this page who, you know, was supposed to be one of the, one of the people who is bringing articles and artifacts out to, uh, to be auctioned, and uh, he says, "They've stolen it. It's gone." And Benedicto, as if from nowhere, like appears from the nearest shadow. Of what? What have they stolen? And he looks and he's like, "The Codex on the Modus." Benedicto looks over. He's like. In the midst of all of that, I do believe that we've been robbed. That was not the book that was on auction. The no, was on with us. no, no, that was uh, that was a that was a different different article all entirely. Different scary um, book. No, this is actually um, one of these strange uh, tablets um, handed down through the uh, the ages from the domination of the Dread Emperor. This is a uh, a much worse thing. Um, so much worse than great. Yeah. Then awesome. they were totally going to sell. Yeah, they were going to. But it's bad that they didn't get money for it. Pretty much. Uh, but that's nobody's concern. Although the Prince of Tatters is nowhere to be found. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I totally let him go. <laughs> Bye. I mean, we stopped him okay. from getting one book. He got a codex instead. Shlemiel, Shlemazel. Yeah. Awesome Austin Pepper Incorporated, right? Like, we, who knows, right? It's. it's uh, Look, that's next season's problem. It's next season's yeah. problem, exactly. There's only so much we can take care of in the season, guys. <laughs> yep. like, come on. I do want to add a moment that Cor will regret, but Sean will hope that is as fun and Kristen doesn't, doesn't hate. I think as this fog fades, Lenora can now see the three of us, yeah. you know, as this fog. And like Cor is like hardcore making out with yeah. Rika, right? Like it's not like one chaste kiss. It's like, I imagine like, this like, in like a dip. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Which is really going to be awkward because she's going to ask you to be her second in just a second. But <laughs> it's like, it, I think that Core is lucky that uh, Lenore is currently in process of just stuffing those emotions right yeah, into exactly. a box. Right, right, right. So... <laughs> just if you, if you needed some more emotions to shove into a box, I got some for you. Right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I think that Lenore is probably a little bit bothered. Um, but again, we're just we're shoving feelings into a box. <laughs> Rumor is just so clueless, like at, at all of the love triangle that like, she's just kind of like looking around and she has a like little, little spidey sense finally kick on that goes, I think I was in danger earlier. <laughs> This looks bad. <laughs> oh my god, these social engagements are really dangerous. Yes. They are. So dangerous. Someone could get hurt. <laughs> All right. So as as the dust clears and eventually like the uh, the love fest breaks up, um, when you all get back together, like the uh, the party is gonna continue, like because it's Zilrian, and the yeah. party continues. I mean, the demon's been sent back to hell or wherever it was from. Most right? of so. them never even like saw like the book doing weird mm -hmm. stuff. But, like it was all just fog and stuff. Um, like it's just 
at this point, it's basically just decadent entertainment. It's like, oh, look, they've got they've got Max that, that put on this this amazing show for us. Do we pay them now? Um, and 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 finally, like it's there there was the the scandal of the the articles that were stolen from the back room, but you know we'll have to track those down later. The um, the show that's must no go reason on. to end end the party. Yeah, right. That's no that's no reason to right. not pick the rest of the bones, right? Um, so the, the gala continues because it'd be poor hosting otherwise. Um, but you know, as the as the prince comes out to officiate, Benedicto, the uh, the you know one of these elder statesmen of the house, uh, comes over and is once again kind of at your side there, Cor, and uh, kind of looks down um, and says, "Are you prepared? Where's your second?" Um, and. Uh... I think it, it, it's like perfect because it, like Cor hasn't had the chance. It's like, Lenore. <laughs> and, and yes, Cor. And she, she you look like you were going to say something. I was yes. just <laughs> yes. the feelings. <laughs> Could we confer? Just, just one moment, Benedict. Sorry, there was an eldritch force here we had to abate. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, she looks at like the seat, the, 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 you know, at the, 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 the uh, and, and yeah, so I think she tries like lean, like, like confab with, for, with Lenore for just a second. Okay. Hey, uh, how do you feel about being my second in this duel? What, what duel? Oh, I'm going to probably die in like an, about 30 minutes or so. Uh, and you're what? Gonna make me look real. No, this is, this is whispered only to. <laughs> Literally. Okay, I mean, okay, okay. It's fine. It's totally fine if Malika hears, like if Malika's like listening in. It's that's like probably gonna die. Gonna drop it like that. <laughs> but I but I, it's your job to make my corpse look really, really good. So um Is that is that why we, you were kissing Malika? Because you, you think you're gonna die, so you're just kissing all the so. yeah. kissing all the pretty ladies. All the pretty um, yes, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, no, that's, that's, def that's, that's, that's definitely it. Definitely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So the, so the duel, who are you dueling? Uh, also, Cor, we've been here like 20 minutes. How did we, how did we end up in a duel? Uh, I mean, I'm impressed. I'm not, I'm not angry. I just, I'm not sure how we ended up in a duel. You know, things, things, just, and, and she's like looking over the default to like Benedicto as well. She's like, yeah, just, just. Two sec, two more thumbs seconds. up. Just like it's going well. I'll be right there. Just a, yeah. She's like, well, it's kind of a long story, but it has to do mm -hmm. with stopping. You know that that moment in the gondola we had, where uh, all of the uh, mm -hmm. all of the people who were hired to keep Claudia from doing what she was going to do, and we sort of like threw them all in the in the in the river. They they didn't like that. Or I sort of threw them all in the river. They, yeah. They, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, of, of course, yes. Okay. Of also, I've heard that she's like part monster. So, mm -hmm. like maybe a little bit inhuman. So maybe you could just coach me real quick on like killing partially inhuman things. Right? That should be easy, right? You're a mercy. You're all about this. Just a few tips. Yeah, tricks, yes. I mean, I, tricks on... I've, had, I've had years of studying and, and slain mom. I'm sure I could just tell you in 20 minutes. If I just condense it down into like three sentences or less. Like Exactly. Thanks. I, I turn. I'm like, we're ready. Let's do this thing. Yeah. Here we. Here we go. I think rumor pops up for a second. Like, wait, who are you fighting? Oh, just. Uh, I think she's uh, the Prince's Justice. Ricky Allen. Oh yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh no, there's like a big gushing moment where like rumor is going to unload on you how amazing Rikiella is in combat and how much she admires Rikiella. And but like in there, I'm going to like give you like a nice little setup action because she's gonna unload some of Rikiella's like sneaky underhanded tactics nice, while discussing. Nice, nice. Well, how much how much does rumor know about uh about like the um the prince's justice like the uh the actual like what's the word i'm looking for like the rules of engagement for this kind of combat um i think that this is like her jam this like she jam? she loves these things she's probably watched ricky Alla like murderize because it must be a duel but it never really ends in a duel with ricky Alla. it ends up with like it's an execution so she's 
she's like super into it. Yeah, this is this is the way that like because no no noble blood can like you can't just execute nobles because that's a bad precedent to set if you're, <laughs> if you're nobles. Um, they have to it has to look like a like an actual contest, right? Um, so we've already set up this sort of like we're in a suspended area. It's clearly like something that's a spectacle. Um, I want Rumor to add something to that. Like what, what, um, like, is there like, is, is this over water? Is it like, is it high in the air? Is it, um, you, uh, you want to add an element of danger to this already? <laughs> yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, yeah, it's not, the stakes are high enough yet. <laughs> um, I've got more production budget to blow. Yeah, right. More production budget. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, like no, I think, I I think that it is, um, no, it, it, it is, it's over, it's over water outside. So here's the thing. It's over water outside of the edge of the city so that um, the best seats to view this are by boat. But the thing is like the, around the platform that you're gonna be fighting on, it's nice and like caged off under water so that they can keep the really big Hungry sharks. Oh no! <laughs> Just oh. in that nice contained area. Nice, <laughs> nice, excellent. Okay. Um, question for for Lenore. Well, actually, for Kristen, because Lenore, I don't know how how very um, up to date <clears throat> on public blood sports uh, Lenore is. Mm -hmm. um, but Kristen, what is the traditional role of a second in this weird like? suspended over sharks cage match. To sing the eulogy. <laughs> like, what are you going to be expected to do here? I mean, uh, other than make sure it's an honorable duel, um, prepare Kor's burial wig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I definitely think making sure it's honorable um, and watching and I think part of that is watching their second, right? I think that Lenore is thinking um, they might be. So, so the traditional role of the second is like the thing that the second is expected to do is whatever they can get away with. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. That is the most Ilrian thing I think. Like, <laughs> can, can I what, add? What, can... What, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I'm supposed to watch. Why? Because if nobody's watching, then anything is allowed. Right. <laughs> Uh, sure. Can I add a, a, a wrinkle to that, Kristen, just to make it yeah. more precarious? I of think course. the seconds my job might be also to be re to recover the body of the of the of of the duelist. So if they die on the platform, that's a relatively trivial task. You go and you, you tend to your friend. Right. If they fall in the shark tank, though, right. it suddenly becomes a really really dangerous job <laughs> to to go recover yeah. their bodies because no nobles should live or die by the sword, but they shouldn't be mauled by sharks right no. like, so it's a quick recovery too it, yeah it's, it's, yes. yeah no, I mean, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're probably dead but you know they can't uh yeah so just just okay. to make your job that much easier i that like that i yeah. like that but my very first thought is that if you're losing core's gonna jump in knowing lenore's gonna save her <laughs> don't jump in john <laughs> i'm just kidding uh, uh. <laughs> no i like it <gasps> nice so as as like this, we're, we're kind of treated to like a, a horror show montage of Rekiala like just knocking pe people into into the shark cage. Um, like we come back and like it's like the zoom out on on like everybody's eyeballs, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Benedicto kind of like opens his hands and he's like, "If we're all prepared, then shall we retire to the place of judgment?" And I think we're gonna take a break. Nice. Okay. Love it. All right, friends, uh, we'll be back in like five and we'll see what a beautiful corpse core makes then. <laughs> see you all soon. <laughs>